Hi, I'm Erin Dodge with the library. Today I talk to Jason Moody, Director of Education and Community Outreach with the Spokane Symphony. We talk about student passes, we talk about education programs for students, and some upcoming symphony performances. You're not going to want to miss this, so stick around. Hello, Jason. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some different educational programs, um, some cost-saving programs for, for students, mm -hmm. young, young people, and some things that are coming up uh, with the Spokane Symphony. We're going to talk about the Spokane Symphony. Great. <laughs> and so um, I, I, know, I saw that you have um, some ways for youth to, to see the symphony, experience the symphony that are uh, kind of like cost savings. So there's, I see fast tickets, young friends program, the college card. Um, can you tell us about those who can participate, how, how it works? Yeah, they're, they're great programs. And I think it's amazing that part of our goal is to get as many students into the Fox as possible. Cause I yeah. think it's, it's a wonderful way to, um, you know, the, the threshold for, for, enjoying music is it's sometimes sometimes it can be a little high and so we're we're trying to find ways to get get more students into the fox because it's a wonderful way to you start building that knowledge and and it kind of builds on itself the longer you go and to make it really accessible and exciting and, and, and a wonderful experience so the first one of there the fast tickets is any k-12 through student can get free tickets to any oh. of our masterworks so that's it's Pretty simple. It's just that you just call the box <laughs> office and say, I want a fast tick. And then they will have, they will get a free ticket great. for you. And they can, I think there's certain places in the hall where they can seat you, but they can also, if you come with a subscriber, sure. um, they can seat you with them as mm -hmm. well. So there's that. There's young friends, which is where a classroom can come. So oh. we offer those to teachers uh, um, or school groups or homeschool groups work as well. And so teachers can bring I think it's well, as, as large as they want to, uh, sure. as many students as they want to, but for every 25 students that come, there's a free ticket with that. Um, or I think two free tickets for adults and then all the students come for okay. free as a part of that. Um, so that's a wonderful chance for classrooms to participate. And then do, you, I think it probably just happened. Um, there's also like a fourth and fifth graders come for a couple of days and experience a symphony live as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's card. That's going to be next week, actually, where okay. we have, we'll have 6,000 fourth grader or fourth and fifth graders okay. come to the Fox in the course of two days for education concerts. Well, that's great. Uh, I think my son did that. Okay. Also, so, yeah. yeah. I remember that. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. So young friends is with the, the classroom and the college card. Right. And then the college card is one of those things that I lived in lots of big cities while I was doing training and I, always go back and, and, and rue that I didn't take more advantage of these sort of deals because, Me too. Me too. <laughs> right. Uh, so <laughs> the college card, it's $40 and it gets you into all the masterworks for the year. Okay. Um, so even at this point where we were two down, there's, there's six masterworks left. It's still a great deal to have yeah. six concerts for $40. Absolutely. Um, and you can, and then you can get a companion ticket with that for 20. So it makes for also a really cheap date. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That's really smart. Um, so that's cool. So yeah, I, I like the idea of, um, also a lot of music is so digital these days, right? And so the symphony is live. Yeah. <laughs> and having been to the symphony now a couple of times, it's just a whole other, ex other experience. It's, you feel it viscerally, yeah. you know, feel it in your body. And it's just, um, ugh, can really bring up emotions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I was, it's funny. I've been, I've had several conversations in the last couple of weeks with people that have come up after a symphony concert or a solo concert and have said more or less the same thing. Like that just made me want to cry. And I don't know why, <laughs> you know, and it's, I think music has this ability to bypass a lot of our barriers that we oh, put up yeah. around emotions that we, you know, that we have to do to survive. I'm in, watering in the, up right in, now thinking right. about it. <laughs> In, in the world, but then when you listen to music, it can it can just bypass that and I speak agree. to our human experience in a way that nothing else can. I kind also think gets in the core. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I also think sitting in a hall with a thousand other people mm -hmm. sharing this is a really powerful thing. And it's the weird. I, I always think it's kind of the weirdest place to find community. But I love those moments where, and this is as a performer on stage. Where all of a sudden, you know, it'll get really quiet or we'll have a, a, a slight pause in between movements or, or just in, in a piece. But you can, the feeling of connection and having the audience with 
us on stage and us all being connected is so strong. And and we almost even, like everybody's holding their breath. Right. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's it's great. And we know from data that it's even versus listening to a CD versus being live, the 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 benefits for mental and physical well being is 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 really amazing. And I love that uh youth, kids, young young adults you get to experience that. So Begin your adventures at the library. Borrow a Checkout Washington Discover Pass backpack or our new birding backpack to explore our stunning state parks and get a look at the birds of the inland northwest. Kids can delve into the wonders of their own backyards with one of our STEM Explorer kits. Take the whole family on a cultural journey with our Family Museum passes to Mobius Discover Center or Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture. Sign up for guided hikes along local trails to learn more about our natural spaces. Check out a pickleball set and head to a court near you. And be sure to visit our mobile library link at a community event. At Spokane County Library District, your next adventure starts at your local library. So the the Spokane Symphony has several education programs. Uh, Before we started recording, you were talking about going out to talk to um, elementary students today. Um, Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about the ways that they provide learning opportunities for students? Yeah. So there's a lot of exciting programs. And one of the things that I really like about my position, I'm about just coming up on two months in it now. So so pretty new as as director of education, but the my actual title, which is Director of Education and Community Engagement. And I love that part of it as well, that it's, we have these great K through 12 programs, but then it expands out to infants through, through end of life. So uh, I can kind of just talk you through some of the the programs that we have. We'll start with the, the kind of our large scale ones, our Symphony Day, which is the one mentioned that's coming up next week. Um, We have a, it's this year's program is Heroes and Legends. And so it's a, it's a 30 minute program. And we send on a learning guide to teachers ahead of time that goes to the pieces and it talks about just some basic aspects of introducing the orchestra. We all wear different color coded t-shirts. So the so string, you're... you know, strings are in purple and okay. percussions in yellow. You know, we have, so that you can oh, kind then. of see the different groups of the orchestra. Oh, that's really smart. And yeah. there's times for the students to get up and participate and sit down. It's about a 30 minute program, but I think it's, it's a great introduction. When I was, you know, I, I part of my job as well, I get to go into classrooms and work with, with teachers and inevitably, when I'm in middle school or high school, someone is like, I remember coming in fifth grade and right. in there that that inspired me to choose that instrument. And that's that's a big part of this targeting fourth and fifth graders is that's generally when students in the schools are having to choose an instrument. Right. In in Spokane, it'd be sixth grade in Valley. Oftentimes it's fifth grade, but somewhere somewhere in there. And so right. making sure those students have access to hearing different instruments and how they fit together in an ensemble. So that's that's Symphony Day and yeah, again there's about 6,000 6, kids that are doing it this year. And it's, wow. there's a lot of choreography getting, you know, we have two shows fit into a two and a half hour chunk, wow. two days in a row. So getting <laughs> 1,500 students in, in 1,500 out. students out, 60 buses in and out. It's, wow. you know, it's, it's a lot, but it's, it's, it's an exciting event. We also do in the spring, our, our other large scale concert is called Link Up. And this is a partnership with Carnegie Hall. They have a curriculum that includes playing on recorders, Oh, and my daughter did that. And yeah, okay, great. Okay. Yeah, and and playing with the symphony along with some of those oh, tunes. So they I'm not sure they she get, did that part. <laughs> they get the curriculum earlier in the year. Oh, that's and great. And teachers can choose to use it how they want to throughout the year and then they come visit the symphony and we play songs. Some of the some of the pieces are just symphony and then some of the songs we invite everyone on oh, on the recording. Fun. So there's nothing quite like the sound of, you know, 1500 recorders <laughs> in in the box of the symphony. It's great. It's so much fun. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So we have that program and then we do a program called YMEP, which is Youth Music Education Program. And did I get that right? Yes. Youth Music Education Program. And that's where members of the symphony go into schools to help with sectionals. Sometimes they'll just sit in rehearsal. Oh, I see. Um, occasionally do individual lessons. It's really the goal of that is to be a support to the classroom nice. teachers for what they do. And so most often they'll prep for... Yeah, a, a sectional, or if they have a concert coming up, they'll want the the coach to hear Excellent. their their ensemble. That's a really great way of connecting, and I love that 
we have more opportunities there to do a little bit more of a deep dive and get to know students too. And that's that's one of my one of my goals with all of our education work is that we can find you know personal and relevant connections. And so we can do that in the large scale, but it also works you know, particularly well right. with when you're a smaller class classroom, the same musician will go into a school up to 10 times a year. And so they can kind of develop relationships. And that's that same sort of thing where um, if they come, if the student comes to the symphony, they have that point of contact. And, and that invisible barrier is not quite so barrier anymore. They're like, right. I know him. Right. <laughs> and, and I think it's, hopefully it's a, I, I think it's a helpful. Um, yeah. Well, okay. they also can see, Oh, I could do that. I could, be right in the symphony yeah. and play. So yeah. 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 That's great. So that's one EP. We do oftentimes master classes with our guest artists. So this year we've had two so far. Our first guest artist was Havadajan Pratt and he did a piano master class. Um and it was fun. We had students from uh, WSU and University of Idaho and um several private students from around the area. And then Julia Pike did a master class for her students uh, no, for Julia Pike did a master class for flute students in the oh. area and mostly and had same sort of thing, university students from all around the region and some high school students. And they get to perform on stage at the Fox. Oh, nice. um, and it's, it's a great experience. And it's, you know, I know from my own experience getting to work with, you know, you have your private teacher that is amazing and does sure. the everyday of course. work and, and inevitably a master class clinician will come in and say the exact same thing. But, maybe in a slightly different yes, way. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe or maybe even in the same way. <laughs> exact you know? words. Yeah, exactly. But but just to have someone else reinforce that is is really effective and helpful. So that's our our master classes. We have a couple other um, uh, going outside of K through twelve. Okay. We have a program for infants called the Lullaby Project, and it's really a sweet thing where uh, new mothers we've. We've partnered with the uh, YWCA, and new mothers can uh, sign up for this program, work with a teaching artist, and write a lullaby for their newborn, and then the symphony. So very personalized. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's, it's you know I, we have these large scale projects, and then we have kind of more of the boutique uh. projects. And I think, <laughs> but I think it's really interesting and and, and so really impactful. Special. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And so then the the mothers. We'll work with the teaching artist okay. and develop a, a tune and lyrics for their lullaby. And then symphony musicians perform them and record oh. them and give them the recording of that, that they can keep. Uh, so it's a, it's a really special and meaningful project. Yeah. Um, going the other direction, and this is one that we're doing a lot of work on right now that I'm really excited about, is work with dementia patients. And so this is... Um, loosely called the the reconnect project at this point okay. and we will we've been working with some music therapists some neurologists um gerontologists um physical therapists to kind of put together a program where musicians will play in memory care units okay for for the for residents there and it's really amazing right now the data about how effective this is yeah. um, across the board. And like we were talking about how music has the potential to um, speak to people in, you know, in the nonverbal ways. It's, right. it's, it's, it's com music is communication. Right. But in particularly with someone who might be nonverbal, right. it's really powerful to see a, a group go in and perform. And by the end, people might be singing songs from a, mm. that they, from lyrics they knew from the 50s or 60s right. and 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 even just you know animating up we know from research that the one of the, language can be gone and rhythm will still be in the brain and right. and people can still communicate that way it's great so we have some programs here at the library for uh, a group called dementia friends yeah. that work on um learning how to create a dementia friendly in a uh, community. Wow. And we also have memory cafes where they do different things where they'll play music or they'll do activities or they'll have something where they're looking at photographs from throughout the decades and, and to sort of help, you know, caregivers as well as, as those with memory loss or, or dementia. So that's, I find that amazing. Yeah. It's exciting. And yeah. I, and, and I think it's really, the, the goal is just to yeah increase quality of life of and, 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 and the, we were speaking with a music therapist the other day was talking about, you know, finding a normalizing event. Sure. Because so much of 
these folks' experience is, is, it has to be terrifying. Right. You know, and, and finding that spot where I can't remember that, those lyrics to that song. Yes. And it, so, so that finding those normalizing events, I think it's really yeah. crucial. I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> Our Tuesday Memory Cafes at North Spokane Library are friendly weekly gatherings that offer a community space for those navigating memory loss and their caregivers. Every Tuesday at 11 a.m., stop into the library to connect and participate in activities, all selected to promote mental acuity, health, and wellness. Memory Cafes are a comfortable way to connect with other caregivers and people experiencing memory loss. Be part of something special where understanding and support go hand in hand. Through SCLD at the library, um, our customers can reserve passes for the symphony. It's a great partnership that we have with Spokane Symphony. Um, I know that our foundation um, pays for a set of tickets and then the symphony donates like a match. So oh. it's really great that yeah. more and more of people can come and experience the symphony. Um, we have the tickets for the Nutcracker with State Street Ballet. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring, we have Masterworks 6, LA Stories, and Masterworks 9, uh, Tales of Hemingway. So can you kind of share what what those are? What Tell us a bit about what those performances will be like. Yeah. So for the Nutcracker, this is, you know, a beloved holiday beloved, tradition. Beloved, beloved, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and <laughs> this is, yes, yeah, with the State Street Ballet. And we kind of move the stage of the fox back just a bit so okay. that we can get a pit orchestra of musicians. All right. And we play the amazing score to Nutcracker and there's dancers and and it's a, it's a wonderful experience. It's almost always always packed with lots of people and it's it you know, it never feels like you're quite to the holidays at least particularly for the musicians. Once right. <laughs> once we're through Nutcrackers and we're like, oh, it's we we we've made it to the holidays. We made but it to it's, the holidays. it's the best way to start yeah. out December. So we love doing that. One thing I wanted to mention a part of the mm -hmm. Nutcracker is I think that the date might be the, on the fourth. Yeah, the fourth of December. We have a sensory friendly Nutcracker this year, and so it'll be a little bit earlier than the other performances. And it's not uh, the, the goal of it is not to pack the fox out by any means actually i think there's only about 300 tickets available okay. and and in the there's a few accommodations that that we make to the performance and to the space to try and make it a more inviting space for for people that might not normally get to go to concerts okay. and or that might be on the autism spectrum um or have some sort of any kind of yeah, sensory exactly any issue. sensory so the the lights are a little bit lower the sound is a little bit lower there's trampolines where people can can jump if oh, they nice. okay. move um exercise balls very you know different different kind of stations right. that make it might make it possible oh, that sounds uh, great and it's a really me meaningful thing there's a, a pianist in the orchestra who's who subbed a lot greg presley and he shared this with me that his his nephew came and attended last year okay and he after in his he said his and he just wrote, let me look here. Yeah, he says, my nephew is profoundly autistic and has to spell with a letter board. And so after the concert, he went over to visit his sister and his nephew. And his nephew wrote out, um, the music performance yesterday was the most beautiful, intense experience I have ever had. The music stirred the audience. The reaction that I saw around me was pure joy. Hmm. Um yeah, I mean it's that's, that's powerful. That's why we, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's why we do it. Oh, that's great. Um, so you know, he, he's saying at this point, my sister and I are I'm crying. Take a Me moment. too. <laughs> <laughs> I have some tissue if you want one. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, that's that's I, I love that. I mean, oh. that's exactly what why we want to be doing it. Yeah. Um, and uh, to give everyone a chance to experience Absolutely. what we know is so powerful. Absolutely. So those the the sensory concert um, is like just before the Saturday and the the Sunday matinee. So the library only has tickets on the right. Sunday, the, but so this is a separate. This is a separate thing, the, but, I, but, but yes. kind of I'm linking it back to to some no, of the programs great. we have. That's great. It's great. It's reminding good to, me when you said yep. Nutcracker. It's that, great to let people know yeah. um, that they can get tickets for yeah. that. That's and just go on to um, the symphony's website. Symphony, symphony's website, or you can call the box office. Excellent. They'll have all the details. Very cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> so there's there's that one. Um, Masterwork Six is a really fun program. Um, Shira Samuel Shrags was our former assistant conductor. Okay, and she now has a job with Dallas doing okay. as as a, an assistant conductor there. When she when we when the symphony first hired her, we knew she was we was great. And 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 okay. and James said, you know, if we can. I think they did a three-year contract. Okay. And he said, if she's here in three years, we haven't done our job. And uh, <laughs> he was a little too prescient in that because after the first year, she <laughs> she got a position okay. with, with Dallas, which, which is a big a big deal. So that's, we're so pleased for her, sad for us. But right. we're glad she's going to come back this year <laughs> and, and conduct this concert. And she's coming with um, Gabrielle Dupre, who's a fabulous young violinist. And it's a really fun program that includes um, the Toast of the Town Overture by Quinn Mason. And it's kind of in this light opera style, um, but, a, but a newly composed piece. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, the Korngold Violin Concerto is what um, Gabrielle will play. And that's really fascinating concerto. Actually, Korn, Korngold did a lot of movie soundtrack and so work, um, you know, mid, mid 20th century. Okay. And so it's, there's a lot of that style that's kind of in the old Hollywood sound. All right. So it's really lush, fun. Nice. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a great concerto. So I think that'll be fun to present. And then we'll end that one with Dvorak seven, which is one of the great, you know, great orchestral pieces. I think Dvorak orchestrates in such a special way that the, 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 the colors that that he produces um and and you know so, so much of the i just find the playing dvorak and listening to dvorak is is always engaging and, and okay. it kind of it makes you want to move there's always some sort of a dance ah. or song that's that's fabulous throughout the symphony uh and then for masterworks nine okay. we have um Sorry, let me just check this. Tales of Hemingway. So as yeah. a person, as a library <laughs> <laughs> with books, <Yes. laughs> it's like, what? what's happening here? Tales of Hemingway, yes. that sounds oh, interesting. Oh boy, yeah, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. So the, the, <laughs> the, <there's, laughs> I was going to say, the, the, the first piece is by um, Camille Papin, and I'm going to just say it's called Heavenly Waters in, in, okay. in English. Okay. I, my French is, I'm er. not going to try it. Okay, <laughs> so, sounds good. Um, and it's very uh, kind of ethereal uh, ah. sound effect. It's it's a it's a beautiful piece um, that we'll we'll be performing. The Michael Doherty was here a few years ago, and we did a recording with him with the symphony. Oh, no. um, he's a great living composer, and he wrote this piece called Tales of Hemingway, which the, um, Zuel Bailey recorded and won the Grammy for. Wow! Okay. And it happened to be just right about the time that James had programmed this, so it's really exciting that we get to present that piece. And yeah, it's a great fit for the library. Fun uh, with all the Hemingway there. Uh, and then this, then the second half is we have uh, Elgar's In the South, which is basically. Uh, a, a short overture that he wrote while he was on vacation, um, kind of an, in an Italian style. And then the final one is uh, Respighi's Pines of Rome. And this is one of those famous, um, you know, rousing pieces where okay. there's four movements, um, more or less a, a, a tour of various gardens in oh. Rome and over the course of a day. Um, and it ends up in a very loud and <laughs> rousing <laughs> ending there you know yeah the 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 last page is it's, it's full sensory experience Fine. because it is you know you, you might you, your shirt's shaking when you're on stage because it's so loud it's, well i but, i i think it even the audience sometimes yeah. they're just they're also right. just feeling yeah. it and yeah. yeah heartbeats going definitely and, yeah yeah so that's Fun. it's a, it'll be a great way to, to end the season to end the season yeah. on a big <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so um, if if someone experiences a symphony, comes down and says, oh, I want to get involved, what are some ways that folks can can get involved with Spokane Symphony? That's great. So we have you know, the one of the amazing organizations that we have partners with us is called the Spokane Symphony Associates. Okay. And they do the upscale sale every year, you know, Christmas Tree Elegance downtown. Okay. They put all that together and they raise uh, generally – more than half a million dollars through that. Right. And there's several other projects that they do. So they're amazing friends of the symphony. Uh, it's a, it's a separate organization, but they, you know, are, they're, they're, they're fundraising. Design. They right. love you guys that, and they, they, they love you. Yeah. And then that's what's so much fun yeah. for us. I mean, when they walk out on stage, we all feel, you know, so much, right. so much gratitude for all the work that they, they put in. So that's, Absolutely. that's a wonderful organization and they have chapters all over town okay. uh, and, and the area. There's opportunities for, you know, 
various volunteer things like okay. ushering and, okay. and and whatever else. But then as as a part of education and community projects, one of the exciting things being in a new role for me is I'm open to all hearing all sorts of ideas okay. and, and pursuing um, partnerships. And it's been an exciting time meeting with various organizations throughout oh, nice. town and, and, and teachers and thinking about how we can best be in the community and be using our strengths as an organization sure. to 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 be out and to be in, impacting lives and to be creating nice. um, important community events. So I'm also would love any ideas that people okay, have. So that, people that should free, contact you. Feel free to contact me. Yes. No, I would love that. Uh, that, that would be great. And I great. get you know, a couple of emails a week saying, hey, I've got this idea. And I, I well, love maybe that. Maybe you'll That's get a great. couple I mean, more. It, right. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's, you know, there's, there's only so so many hours in a day, True. but but it's but I, I think it's 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 fun to to explore options I haven't even thought about. That's great. Oh, this year we also have a a, a new uh, grant through the Hagen Foundation. Okay. The symphony was able to buy a I don't even know. It's kind of a truck sort of oh, trailer. Okay. It's called loosely calling it the Beethoven, and the the, the <laughs> side so the, the yes. side drops down, okay. and then there's a mobile stage there. Oh. So we're hoping to figure out ways to that you know particularly great. you know it's in in Spokane it's harder to use during about you know <laughs> no, November yes yeah, yeah November through uh, February yeah, November through <laughs> February particularly yeah with 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 instruments it doesn't really work but I'm really right. excited for for spring and hopefully some summer spring things where summer we'll be able to festival. be in parks parks and, and festivals yeah, and, and take that fairs and take things. that around town that sounds take great that option. oh that sounds fabulous yeah how fun Beethoven Beethoven <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah, love it yeah <laughs> my, my my son calls it the Beethoven truck. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's kind of the right in between a van and a truck, but it's, okay. it's great. Yeah. So that, I think that'll be the working title. Oh, I'm going to look for that around town. Yeah. Hopefully uh, this next summer. Yeah. So no, we'll have it around. Well, this has been great talking to you, Jason. Thank you so much. Of course, my pleasure. Um, Thank you so much. I, I think I'm probably going to have to get some tickets for the Nutcracker. Wonderful. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> and good. Uh, thanks for all the work you do, both, both as a musician and as an educator. Sounds amazing yeah it's 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 been a lot of fun to be in this role and i one thing i i've always loved about teaching is finding i think i mentioned this but finding those connection points to students and it's a really interesting thing to have the chance to scale that in a different way mm. how you know because I've, I've taught at universities and private teaching for most of my career okay. and so i've had to change from that into this role now but i still love finding those connections there like okay. i was saying being in the being in the classroom this morning um for it was I don't know, probably 45 fourth and fifth graders who are going to be coming to symphony day next week mm -hmm. and yeah finding finding ways to to connect and and make sure that they're um yeah, the, share my love of music and hopefully right. that it, it makes them excited yeah. to be there and to, and to choose an instrument themselves. Well, it sounds great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course, my pleasure. 